Hey everybody, it's Bridget Danner, and we've got a new article out about sympathetic dominance and chronic illness. So it sounds really boring, but it's actually really interesting. So when you've uh, had a chronic illness from Lyme or mold illness or multiple chemical sensitivity, or even from trauma, like emotional trauma, physical trauma, it takes a long time for your body to heal and it may not heal completely and it may different tissues may heal at different rates and you may retain a sense of uh, caution about future threats that put your body back into sympathetic dominance so one uh, physician who's studied this and has some theories about this is dr robert navio and it's called the cell danger response you can read about that in the article uh, but we need to be in parasympathetic rest and digest mode to heal so when our body is stuck in sympathetic dominance um, what from illness or trauma or what have you we really can't properly heal and we may come back into it easily um, even after say you have gotten the mold out of your body or out of your house so this can be an important system to work on the whole time um, and then also to work on sort of in the later stages of healing, uh, because this might be what you're kind of left with, <laughs> uh, is some nervous energy or anxiety, um, jaw clenching, different symptoms of parasympathetic dominance. So I wanted to share a few tools. Um, there are some practitioners doing specific work around retraining the nervous system, but lots of the things you can do in, in just you know everyday life to manage stress are great for these chronic conditions as well. So deep breathing is really great. You can do different counted um, breathing techniques. So we've got some of that in the article. Um, essential oils is something I love to really quickly share to the nervous system. Oh, there's my dog. Um, some of them increase GABA. For instance, lavender increases GABA, which is a calming neurotransmitter. So sometimes we don't know much about, you know, essential oils action, but when you dig into it, it's really interesting. So a few oils that I like for calming are lavender and ylang ylang. I really like these ones in the bath. I'll show you that in a second. Some things I like for grounding are cedar wood and sandalwood. Um, clary sage is a really nice kind of grounding, balancing, hormone-friendly oil. And when you, I want to do like super panic attack blend, I do rose, sandalwood, and this blend from doTERRA called Serenity. So I'll just put those in my hand and cut my hands and breathe deeply a few times and it can really calm you. And even if you don't have oils, you can still sort of do the breathing um, for the calming. Some other resources I like are uh, the, the essential oils menopause solution. If you're scared of the word menopause, there's also the essential oils hormone solution. It has great tips about supplements and diet as well as um, essential oil recipes and um, I'm gonna say morning routines, evening routines to keep you in as much relaxed state as possible. Uh, another book I like is Essential Oils to Boost the Body and Heal the Brain by my friend Jody Cohen. Um, it's got special essential oils information, but it's also got some really great information on how different systems work in your body, um, like how your brain detoxifies, and how your lymph moves. So I think it's, it's really interesting if you're interested in functional medicine. Um, and then you can do some essential oils in a bath in the Epsom salts with magnesium and sulfur um, are good for detoxification and calming. You can mix these with baking soda first and put in a couple drops of oil. That's what Jody does. My habit is just to put in straight two cups of Epsom salts and then a couple drops of oil um, on top of the bath. Uh, a couple of the resources we have in the blog are from Dr. Daniel Amen, who has a brain quiz that I really like. And Thais Gibson is, um, I guess she's a therapist and she does work around attachment style and relationships. And it's something that's been helping me 
a lot. So if you are dealing with chronic stress and anxiety, especially if you don't really know kind of where it's coming from, uh, I think it's be an interesting article for you to read and take away a few new ideas. And really the most important thing I'd love for you to learn from this video is that calming yourself is incredibly important. Uh, it's pretty dangerous to go around just constantly stressed out and we're almost encouraged to do it in our society. Um, so learning to calm is really also learning to heal and self-care. So um, make sure it's a priority in your day, in your life.